and welcome back to the second video of our P7 discussion. Which we're still looking at rational expressions. Now we're going to be dealing with multiplying and dividing them. This should actually be very familiar if you have multiplied or divided any type of fractions recently. Most of the same rules still apply. If you want to multiply fractions, you really should simplify first. You may remember from back when we were doing things like 3 fifths times 10 21st, it was always good to simplify first. because then the multiplication is much easier and you don't have to reduce at the end. Two-sevenths would be your answer. The same basic concept still applies. We are going to simplify our rational expressions and then we are going to multiply them like before horizontally, numerator to numerator, denominator to denominator and the only difference with division is you have to take a reciprocal of the divisor, the second expression. That's enough said as far as the theory. Let's look at some examples. The first example we're going to look at is exercise 34 here. This is another problem somewhat like the last one we looked at in the previous video. Here I have a 3 minus x, and I'm fairly certain I'm going to get an x minus 3 out of this. Remember, those are going to be the same factor. You'll just have to pull out a negative 1 from one of them. So I'll probably start off by pulling out a negative 1 from that 3 minus x. So negative 1 times x minus 3 over and I might as well rewrite the bottom to x plus 3. I can just flip the order of the terms easily there. And then I've got to factor these two expressions. I think it'll be fairly easy because they both have a negative 3, just the slightly different middle term. I can use the shortcut on both of these. Uh, in this case, the 3 needs to be positive and the 1 needs to be negative. So this will be x plus 3 x minus 1 and in the one on the bottom the 3 would have to be negative so you'd have x minus 3 x plus 1 and then we reduce common factors and our final answer multiply the negative 1 through I will have 1 minus x over just so I have a parallel form I'll change the order down there to 1 plus x. It would be fine to write 1 minus x over x plus 1 or negative x plus 1 over x plus 1 or uh, negative x plus 1 over 1 plus x. All of them should be accepted if you're doing a similar problem in WebAssign. Only difference here is it's just the factoring is a little bit more involved, but honestly not much. Don't really be confused with the uh, multiple variables. This is still going to factor as if this were 2x and 1. Because the factoring pair of 1, because it's 1y squared, that, mul that adds to get 2 is just 1 and 1, so this will be x plus y times x plus y. The denominator there is a difference of squares, so it's going to factor to x plus y times x minus y. Might as well get a jump on the reducing work times, let's see here, 2x and x. And here I have to have y and y. So the only question is where the signs go, because I have to have a positive and a negative. And you can still do this by grouping, but I think I ought to be able to figure this out. So the outer 
multiplication would be 2xy and the inner multiplication would be xy. Now I need a negative xy in the center so I need the 2 to be negative and the xy to be positive. So if I want the outers to be negative then I need the negative right here and the inners I need a positive right here. And then for our last factoring. I might as well get a head start again. What have we got? X and X and I need a factoring pair of negative 2. So 2 and 1 and the 2 would have to be negative because it has to add to be a negative 1. Factoring pair of negative 2 that adds to be negative 1. So X minus 2 x plus, oh, x minus 2y, I'm sorry, x minus 2y, x plus y. So I get to reduce away one more x plus y, and I think that'll finish me. My final answer is 2x plus y over x minus 2y. So there's division for you. Sorry, multiplication for you. I'm going to do a division. Here's a division. I'm not doing too many of these just because, except for one operation, they are functionally identical to multiplications. So remember, the only difference when you're dividing fractions is that you have to flip your divisor. So this is equal 4y squared minus 9. When I'm doing these myself I usually do some factoring as well in this first step but I'm just gonna rewrite it for you guys times y squared plus 5y minus 6 over 2y squared plus y minus 3. So let's do some factoring. That's a difference of squares. 2y plus 3, 2y minus 3 times. Factor the other easy one. Need a factoring pair of 6 that, negative 6 that adds to be 5. They have to have different signs so it's not 2 and 3. They have a subtraction of 1. It has to be 1 and 6. So that will be y plus 6, y minus 1. on the bottom there. I think I probably better work that one out. 2 times negative 18 is negative 36. Need a factoring pair. Subtracts to be 9, so they need to be closer together. Uh, 3 definitely goes into 36. That would be 3 and 12. Oh, and that works just fine. Uh, the 12 has to be positive. So, this is 2y squared plus 12y minus 3y minus 18 which factor out of 2y you get y plus 6 minus 3 times y plus 6 so the bottom is going to be y plus 6 times 2y minus 3 well And I just now need to factor 2y squared plus y minus 3. I think I can probably do that by trial and error. 2y and y have to have a 1 and a 3. They're going to have to subtract. So that means I'm probably going to have to end up with a positive 6y minus a y. So if I want to get a 6y, I need a 3 here. And if I want to get a minus 1y, I need a minus 1 there. I think that'll finish the problem because I don't see anything else that will reduce. So we just have 2y plus 3 
times y minus 1, all that over 2y minus 1 times y plus 3. So at this point, we've talked about addition. I'm uh, sorry, we've talked about multiplication. We've talked about division. Now it's time to talk about addition and subtraction sum. When you're adding and subtracting numeric fractions, the first thing you always have to do is find the least common denominator. No different here. Still got to find a least common denominator of among all our rational expressions. Once we find that, we raise all of our rational expressions, all of our fractions to be over that LCD. Then we can add and subtract the fractions across the numerators. And don't forget, you should check to see if you can simplify at the end. So just as a quick review here, when you're finding a least common denominator, when we did it back in the day for something like say, one over 24 and one over 60, to find the least common denominator, you can work up the multiples of a number, but in case you ever have a, a large set of numbers you have to find an LCD for, that's really inefficient. The fastest way to find a least common denominator is to factor everything down. So 24 is 6 times 4, which is 2 times 3 times 2 times 2 equals 2 to the third times 3 and 60 is 6 times 10 so that's going to be 2 times 3 times 2 times 5 equals 2 squared times 3 times 5 and to build an LCD least common multiple of these two numbers you write out all the prime factors, all the factors you couldn't break down any further. So 2, 3, and 5. And then they each get a power equal to the highest power they had in any single factorization. So 2 had at most a power of 3. 3 had at most a power of 1. And 5 only appeared once total, so it had at most a power of 1. And this is the least common denominator which in this case would be 120. When you look at rational expressions, you try and factor the denominators completely. In this case, it looks like it's already done. I can't break down x minus 4 and x plus 6 any further. So my least common denominator is just going to be x minus 4, I couldn't factor it any further, and x plus 6. And I need to put an exponent on it, on each factor, that is the highest exponent it had in any factorization. In this case, both appeared only once. So it's just one. But you can see down here, we have a factor that appears twice. So that'll pop up in the next problem. So this one's actually fairly simple. All I need to do is multiply in the piece I'm missing. So I have x plus 6 times that, x plus 6 times that, x minus 4 times here, x minus 4 times here. I highly recommend for the next step you just write it as a single fraction with multiplications on the top. So this would be x times x plus 6 minus 3 times x minus 4. The reason I highly recommend that, I'm writing the denominator here, is that it's easy to forget that this negative which I put on the 3 there, is going to distribute through. Because if you just write 3x minus 12 on the top and then combine the fractions, it's very hard to forget the minus is going to distribute. It's very hard to remember. It's easy to forget. Very hard to remember that the negative is going to distribute to both. Here, it's fairly easy. x squared plus 6x minus 3x plus 12. and the denominator is just going to be the same. I'm not going to write it again in this step. So that's x squared plus 3x plus 12 and on the bottom I have x minus 4 times x plus 6. 
I don't think this will factor. Only factoring pairs of 12 are 2 and 6, 1 and 12, and 3 and 4, and none of them add to be 3. The reason I'm checking is because I want to make sure the fraction doesn't reduce at the end. Because if this had factored and I would have had an x minus 4 or an x plus 6, I still would have had to combine, I still would have had to reduce. But it didn't reduce, so this is my final answer. You could work out the bottom as well, but there's no special need to. On 66 here, factor out all the denominators. That one's factored. That one's pretty well factored. I mean, you could write it as x plus 1 times x plus 1, but there's no special reason to do that. This one is a difference of squares. That's x plus 1 times x minus 1. So what's my LCD? Well, my only prime factors are x plus 1 and x minus 1. But x plus 1 had at most a power of 2. So this is going to be my LCD. That means this one gets multiplied by another x plus 1 and an x minus 1 on top and bottom. You can't really fit it on bottom, so draw little arrows and there. This one needs the x minus 1. You can probably fit an x minus 1 down there. And this one needs a single x plus 1. Because it already has one of each, an x plus 1 and x minus 1. So that means I have x plus 1 times x minus 1 minus 2 times x minus 1 plus 3 times x plus 1 over my least common denominator of x plus 1 squared times x minus 1. So that's a little sloppy there. My pen slipped. So that'll be x squared minus 1, x plus 1 times x minus 1, minus 2x plus 2, multiplying the 2 through, plus 3x plus 3 over the common denominator. And that's going to be x squared plus x minus 2x plus 3x, and then minus 1 plus 3 plus 2. So that'll be plus 4, I think. Yeah, plus 4. Again, that's not going to factor, so I'll have to stay with what I have. x plus 1 squared x minus 1. This last problem is just yet another exercise to remind you to make to look carefully at factors to make sure they're not negatives of each other because this one will take a long time if you fail to notice that x minus 2 and 2 minus x are the same factor just off by a negative this has opposite signs of that so instead of getting an LCD that would be x minus 2 times 2 minus x multiplying the missing piece into both and combining and then reducing at the end. This is very simple. You just multiply one of these. It doesn't really matter which one times negative 1 over negative 1. And then I have 3 over x minus 2. You can I'll take this negative 1 times that one plus 2 over x minus 2. And then this is just 5 over x minus 2. Very short if you recognize that. Otherwise, you have to go through the whole process. It takes much longer. That's going to be all for this video. For the last video for P7, we will look at simplifying complex fractions and maybe do some rationalizing of denominators. It's more uh, just a collecting of miscellaneous extra things we can look at with fractional and rational expressions. So that's what we will look at in the next video. I will talk to you then.